Oh, Welcome back to another episode of Cavs Corner. I believe this is number seven. Yeah, episode seven. Episode yep. seven. Yep. yep. Um, I'm joined by my co-host Ash Zalik and special guest for the second week in a row, Mitch Taylor. Just coming back, becoming a regular. Yeah, might have to be yeah, a regular, yeah. I think. Don't mind your input. You're, yeah. you're always welcome here. <laughs> <laughs> Look, last episode wasn't the best. We did say easing of restrictions, and we went into a snap lock. Yeah, we timed that really nicely. Yeah, it wasn't we? our best no. effort there. <laughs> it wasn't our best effort. So, look, we do have COVID restrictions. Ash, do you want right, to go through I'll, that? I'll run through them now. Now, we are filming today. Again, is Wednesday. Yep. Things yep. could change. But as of right now, masks are on at all times, indoors, outdoors. Obviously, if you have a medical exemption, you don't have to wear it, um, and you don't have to wear it when you're in exertive role. So if you're refereeing a game, or you're playing in the game, or you're coaching in the game, and you're getting a bit fired up, and it's getting a bit you know sweaty under there, and Mitch, you can relate to that. You, oh, can, you can take the mask off briefly for that one, but uh, we would prefer if the coaches kept the masks on as much as possible, but we understand that sometimes you have to take them off. Um, the next one, we've got one parent or guardian plus dependents if they're required at domestic. So preferably, if you've got siblings and things like that, that's not just open field, you know, bring them all down. If you can leave them at home, leave them at home, or if you can get them babysat, that's, that's better. Um, but is one parent or guardian plus dependents for domestic. Now, for VJBL, just to clarify, the rules we've sent it to everyone on team app, yeah. but for VJBL and the Junior Cavaliers, it's one parent or guardian, no dependents. Yes. So yeah, just to clarify that, just yeah. to clarify that rule difference there, we don't make the rules. Obviously, VJBL has their own rules for, set by the league, and we have our rules set for the case of basketball competitions, but just want to clarify that one. So for VJBL, it's one parent of guardian and there's no dependence allowed. But all of the rules for VJBL are on the team app. So if yep. you're not sure, you can go check them out or just ask your coach or your team manager. And as always, make sure you check in with the QR code when you get to the venue and uh, follow all the staff instructions. Now, you would have got an email earlier in the week talking about the front entry and exit. So that has changed. So previously, you were able to enter through the front and then you could leave from one of the emergency exits on, you know, court nine, two, three, all those areas, right? One of the many. That has, that's changed now, guys. So now it's only entry through the front and exit through the front. So we're trying to, you know, now that we have a little bit less people in the building, we're slowly just moving back to, to what COVID normal will be when we come back with the hope that, you know, this will be the last lockdown. And we won't have anything, and anything future won't, won't affect us too much. So that's uh, that's all the, the COVID rules. And again, it's Wednesday now, so those you know those yeah, could change. Our luck. It's gonna, it's <laughs> those gonna be could different. change, but uh, hopefully, hopefully they don't. It looks like we're on, on track. I think we had zero cases today on Wednesday. So you know, hopefully you Positive know, news. hopefully by next week, you know, we can start to relax those rules and get some more people in to spectate the games. But at the moment, as I said, I'll repeat that one more time: one parent or guardian. So it's not just a welcome for spectators. It needs to be a parent or guardian per participant aged eight, under 18. Yep. So if you're aged over 18, unfortunately, no spectators allowed. Um, development programs. Mitch, you're the Casey Basketball Development Officer. Yes, I am. Go through it. Tell us what's happening in the development program area. Now, I'll try to slow it down again this week just so you boys aren't going to give me too well, much stick for uh, the extreme <laughs> pace that, was a, that I was dude, going you know, He was on a roll last week, oh, last, last episode. That was yeah, a lot yeah, happening yeah. there. But yeah, you go for it, mate. Um, so our domestic academy. Uh, so we've got that. That's starting as of next week. Um, so Mondays, they're the younger kids session. So I think anywhere from 2014 born up to about 2010 born will be on the Mondays. Um, and then the Fridays will be 2009 born down to 2005 born. Um, so just to break that one up there, just to make it a bit easier for those <laughs> watching at home who aren't quick maths people like yeah, myself, yeah, yeah. my notes say, and this is roughly, the year of birth is the main one. That age is 8 to 12 for the first class and 13 to 15 G give or for take. the second yep. class. Give yep. or take a little bit on that space there just to make it easy. So 8 to 12 on a Monday, 13 to 15 on a Friday. How um, many are many spots left in that program? On the Friday, there's a couple. Um, yep. Don't have too many left, but there's a couple. Um, and then on the Monday, yeah, give or take about five-ish left. Five spots. So, so yeah, pretty, pretty limited. So if you're interested, get online. Uh, Matt will put the website in down the bottom here. And, uh, yep, hit register for that one now. So, again, go and... Tell us, Aussie Hoops. Aussie Hoops. Um, we're pretty much jam-packed now. Um, yep. So we're starting that next week. Um, we've only got three spots left at the 6 o'clock on a Thursday. Um, and then we are completely full. Um, yeah, we are. That, start, that starts next blazing. week. It starts next week, uh, Tuesday the 10th. Um, it'll start. And yeah, really looking forward to that one. So I don't want to dis anyone, disappoint anyone at, uh, at home. So yeah. it's Wednesday today. So if you get online tomorrow and it's sold out, it's sold out. There's yep. only three Absolutely. spots left. That's it. We got First in best dress 240 odd kids or 250 odd kids doing this program. Yep. And we've only got three spots left. So, you know, make sure if you're keen, get online right now and lock in that spot on the Thursday 6 p.m. here at Casey Stadium. Yep. Um, Matt, do you want to talk about some of the referee news? Yeah. So look, uh, big development op opportunities for these uh, referees. Uh, huge congratulations to them as well. Uh, Cameron Nunn promoted to C grade. Stripes. 
Stripes. Oh, got the stripes. Big time. It's always exciting when someone gets the stripes. <laughs> Jordan McDonald promoted to an apprentice. Chad Alvarez promoted to an apprentice as well. Cool. So oh, that's my boy Chad. I used to coach him in uh, rep basketball. Yeah. Good player? Good player. Very good player. Good ref, do you reckon? I'm not sure. I don't know. I haven't, I seen, I haven't, him. Seen, I haven't seen, seen him ref. So seen him I don't ref? know. I haven't seen him no, ref. He's a good player. Well, she was a good ref. Yeah. You know, it's a, not that that always translates. No. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> and, although uh, although I, was a, I, was a, I think I was a good ref. Not a great player. <laughs> 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 and uh, also a big congratulations to Jared Johnson who refereed his first VC game. On Friday night, um, sweet on the on awesome. the junior panel, another Casey representative. Yeah, it's amazing news. Great. So domestic, I'll quickly go through that. So obviously, welcome back to everyone over the last week. You know, getting back in the swing of things after the lockdown. Um, now team registration. So if you par- currently play for a domestic club, you don't need to worry about this at all. Yep. But if you don't, if you just play for a senior, you know, senior weeknight team just with your mates, or you have a you do have a junior team with just some kids, just, uh, some friends and things like that, it's not you know not run by a club the registrations for the summer season are now or about to be open later this week if they're yeah. not if they're not open by the time this goes there they're about to be open so again if you're part of a domestic club they'll sort it out for you you don't need to worry about it you contact them they'll sort you out your team and everything like that but if you are an independent team we call them so yeah. if you just run it yourself the registrations will open you'll have to lock those in information for that will be on the website you usually want to get in pretty quick summer season definitely uh, packs out doesn't it summer seasons the, that's the more popular of the two because winter um, i mean obviously we had a lot of lockdowns and stuff like that but winter yeah. generally over the past of you know the last 10 years i've been involved in the, in the in the processes is less popular just because kids you know people play football and they do other things and you know they take it because it's a bit cold and whatnot but summer is always jam-packed definitely. you know yeah, yeah. I mean, not that we like to diss any other sports, but if your choice is between... I can understand choice between footy, basketball. They're pretty fun. If your choice is between basketball and cricket, oh, oh, I'm thinking... I don't, uh, I don't mind me a bit of cricket. I'm, I'm thinking... Oh. I'm going to be back out, though. You don't mind, <laughs> you don't mind watching it. I don't know. You're no, go I used out. to play. used to play under 13, under 15s, I think. Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. Yeah, well, we'll stick to the basketball. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so anyway, domestic basketball. Do you play? Did you play this week? I didn't. I'm still injured. You're still injured? Oh, still injured. Still injured. Bit soft. Still injured. Oh. Bit soft. Yeah. Old man right. injuries, back, hamstrings, you know. Oh, oh, boy. It's all related. Oh, I didn't get the call up, as you, as I've been saying the last few shows. I've been getting the fill-in yeah. role in, uh, in a team for my cousin, but uh, they had a full team back, so I'm um, just back sitting at home on a Monday night. Doing so nothing. Might yep. have to smile one of them. So, uh, yeah, yeah no, no, definitely not. Definitely not. They're, they're, they're doing good things. They're doing good things. But, uh, yeah, no, no call up this week. So, hopefully next week. You know, who knows, right? Who knows? I've, uh, I've got to play a few more to try and qualify for finals in case the opportunity arises. Want to jump on that one, but, you know, uh, I'm a few games off there. And again, Mitch, no domestic? No domestic, mate. Should no you want domestic. to join our uh, Tuesday no. night team? No. All right. No. Injury oh. prone, Mitch Taylor avoids all physical activity where possible. Except, Except Jim. Jim. Except Jim. Except Jim. <laughs> Except Jim. <laughs> Except Jim. <laughs> Very controlled area there. Um, perfect. Let's, uh, let's talk about the Olympics. Oh, here we go. Love, I know you love mate. the Olympics. You, you, you watch all the sport. Everything. Yeah. We're specifically going to talk about the Olympic basketball. Yep. Obviously, the Opals and the Boomers. The Boomers, 4-0 and at the stage. They'll yep. uh, By the time this goes to air, they would have played against USA. So, we're hoping for a big win. Oh, that would be nice. Win there. I reckon they'll knock them off. If they play like they did last night with that level of energy and intensity, like I was just saying this morning to some friends, you know, they, they missed a lot of open shots. Mm. Like, let's be honest. In like that it, first quarter. You know, there's a struggle. lot of open shots that were there that they should make. So, you know... With that level, and they won by 38 against a quality team in Argentina, there's no reason why they can't get the win. I also heard it was a fantastic defensive effort as well. So. Oh, yeah, unreal. it was Argentina <laughs> averaging about 89 points, I believe, mm. uh, for Kevin, the tournament. Kevin the 60? Yeah, 58, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think the two keys are going to be, obviously, Kevin Durant controlling yeah. him and Drew Holiday. Um, yeah. Obviously, he didn't play when we beat them in the exhibition game because he was still in the playoffs. Um, so, controlling him and his impact defensively is going to be big for the USA. So, trying to mitigate that will be, yeah, big. You were saying going to have to worry about our man Patty Thrills, though. This morning, signs a contract with Brooklyn Nets. Brooklyn Nets, yeah. yeah, yeah two years, bad. $12 million. Thanks for coming. $12 million. That'd be all right. I wouldn't say no. I need to get much better at shooting a basketball if I'm, <laughs> <laughs> if I'm going to get on that front. And the Opals, a shaky start. Two and a, oh. They lost the first two. A couple of close ones. And then they, they we, I'm sure the whole country almost was watching the game out um, against Puerto Rico. Oh, almost, almost forgot who they l- played there. Last couple of minutes there just came right down to the wire. Yeah, they they, got they definitely tried not to get 25 points. Yeah, they got, sure. they got mm. the 25 point win. Hard, hard fought effort by the girls. Very, really impressive, especially in that second half. Yeah. We know today, this afternoon, when I say today, it's Wednesday when we're filming. They're playing against USA in the quarterfinal as well. So, um, tough, yeah. Tough gig. USA won 49 straight in uh, tournament play. So, it's gonna well, be hopefully a tough they one. can get it done. But, yeah, t- tough, uh, tough opponent first up. If the Opals can play like they did 
in the second half of that game, especially yep. in that fourth quarter, that level of energy, the intensity, that mm. full court pressure, that type of basketball. I think they're, you know, they're, they're I, would, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't write them off. Mm. If they play like they did in the first quarter yep. of the Puerto Rico game, then, you know, it's going to be a, a tough slog for them. But, you know, I think it's going to be an exciting game. So we'll all be tuning into that one and we'll, uh, we'll chat about it next week as well. Absolutely. Um, we'll chat about how the games go. So, you know, hopefully we've got a couple of medal chances there. Um, fingers crossed. Let's talk about um, let's talk about the Junior Cavaliers. So obviously, they're all back and firing. So yep. you know, Mitch, you obviously basketball development officer, coach under sixteens. Tell us, tell us a bit about the Junior Cavaliers. What's happening? Um, well, there's only about five. I think I believe five games left for some teams. For yep. teams in VC, there's only four. Um, so the season's kind of winding up for any of the teams that are making finals. Uh, but if you are, obviously, we've got a, a few more weeks left. Um, and the finals is a little bit shorter this year. Um, obviously, being COVID lockdowns and. Just kind of getting around that. Um, but yeah, they, get, so they've shortened the finals, have they? I believe so. Okay, I wasn't aware of that. I believe I so. Well, they've changed, the st- they've changed the format somehow. Okay, um, I, no, I, didn't, I didn't know that. I thought they just had cancelled those other games and so, they were still proceeding. Yeah, so it used to be just the old f- top five, I believe. It's top four now, is it? Y- yeah, that, either that or top six for some divisions as well. It's okay, good, yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah. yeah, getting to the pointy end of the season for some teams um, and then slowly, in a couple of months' time, looking forward to tryouts. So we spoke to you a couple of weeks ago. Yep. One loss for the year. How'd you go on Friday night? Oh, I, I don't know how my team does it, but we managed to pull out another win. Another um, win. We're down 18 uh, midway through the third. Who'd you play? Um, Waverley. How do they um, rate? They're in the middle of the pack. Middle of the pack. Middle of the pack. So I think they were sitting fifth yep. at the time. Um, down nine going into the fourth quarter. Down nine with about a minute 45 to go, and the uh, the coach called a timeout, which was all right on uh, yep. our side of things. And then uh, we, yeah, we managed to get up by two. Down 11 point, 11 and 0 run almost? Yep. 11 and 0 so run we, uh, at yeah, 45. We had a wow. side ball with uh, five and a half to go when we dropped a little uh, back pick for Truman who got a layup pretty much right on the buzzer and uh, that was all she wrote. Mitch Taylor, Junior Cavaliers, where amazing happens. Who got this week? Hawthorne this week. Best team in uh, the country. In the country? In the country. So this is the group that yeah won. Uh, so they're first, obviously. Yeah. Where are you ranked? The game. So we're second. Second. In so your pool or is it still a whole t- thing of 20 at the moment? Uh, just in our pool. Yeah. Just in your but pool. But that, so. that'd be first overall. They haven't lost a game yet. Yeah. Okay. So a big game this week. They've got a couple of NPP players and nationally recognised. Got to lose at some point. So got to lose at some point. Got to lose at some point, yep. right? Um, yeah. Awesome. Let's talk about uh, the... Guzman Gomez, Senior Cavalier. So I'll quickly just run through the weekend's results. So we had uh, the Zadis Cup against McKinnon, triple header here at Casey Stadium. The Champ Men and Champ Women, they both unfortunately lost. The Champ, uh, the Youth Women, they did get a big win against McKinnon. And uh, your boys, the, the Youth Men, headed over to Craigie Bird and picked up the W. Yeah, both won by 37, which I saw the other day, which is... Uh, yeah, that's uh, uh, yeah. A, little bit, a, little, a little bit a little bit interesting one Blowing there. some teams out, which is uh, good to see. Tell us about the Youth, uh, the youth and Men's game. Um, bit of a slow start, which we expected. Uh, we weren't expecting the... Uh, yeah, the highest skill level after coming back for a few weeks of lockdown and only had one training session before playing. Um, makes it hard. Definitely makes it hard. It does. Um, Jordy Goyka just decided to go, I think he was about seven of eight in the first quarter and he had 23 points at halftime and just kind of set the tone early. And then Blake Taylor came through and finished off. I think he had about 21 points in the second half and just really set the tempo. And it was a good offensive game. We haven't had a good offensive game like that for a while. So it was, uh, it was nice to have one of those. And Hopefully, put us in good stead for the next couple of weeks leading into finals. Nice, Blake Taylor, your brother, best best athlete in the family. Oh, I don't know. He'd like to say so, but uh, Zach and Kai are pretty athletic. What about a prime uh, Mitch Taylor? Nah, not a prime uh, Mitch Taylor. Nah, He'd be nah, up there, I reckon. Uh, prime up there. Nah, nah, definitely. I'm not. talking solid. Ten-year-old Mitch Taylor. Oh, no, his prime, prime was top age. <laughs> top age eighteen was definitely prime Mitch Taylor. <laughs> um, Matt, talk us about round. Not round. I've got round eleven here in my notes. Not round eleven. Tell us about round twenty. Definitely not round eleven. Uh, but look, all teams are playing away this weekend. No which is, crowds. Which is okay because no crowds anyway at the moment. Yeah, exactly. So home or away. I mean, we'd prefer to have the games at home for the, the little bit of a home court advantage. Understanding the court. Exactly. But, but look, if you want to get around well. the youth men, um, well, the championship men and the championship women, they do stream them online. Yep. gameday.bigv.com.au We'll get that out there on the bottom. It's a so long yeah, one if there. You, if yes. you ever check in the live stats, it's right there. Yeah. Um, yep. um, Saturday afternoon, um, I believe the champ women started about 6. Five, it's actually 5.30. It it's a little bit 5:30, earlier. 5.30. 5.30. 5.30 and 7.30, those two games. Back to Are back. Are they both at Hawthorne? Both at Hawthorne. Both at Hawthorne. Um, but yeah, jump online, get around them. And the, uh, and the youth league? Uh, again, they're both, they're both away again. Yeah, they're the both away. Youth um, youth Week women play Saturday afternoon. The youth men play Sunday afternoon, I believe. So, so we're Sunday at Altona. So big game there. Mm. Um, Altona, unfortunately, so Big V have changed their final structure now. Top um, four. Top four. Yep. Which uh, Altona were sitting equal fifth. 
but I think based off that, the current change, they were being knocked out because they're not going to be able to make it now. Not uh, enough games left. Because you guys, you guys are two rounds shorter than everyone else. Yes, correct. You guys so this is our second last yep. round. Um, so I think unless a miracle kind of happens and Collingwood drop all their games, which looks kind of unlikely because Collingwood are quite good, um, yep. Altona, yeah, are going to really struggle to make it. Mm. But so unfortunate for them. But yeah, big game for us in uh, the terms of the city. We could potentially still finish first, potentially still finish fourth. So... Can, uh, so how does this game affect the grand scheme of things for you guys? Like, can Altona come in and spoil your party a bit and push absolutely. you down the Absolutely. Yep. 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 Absolutely. On well, team, um, like we've all been there. We've all been in teams that have officially knocked out of the finals race. Yep. The goal is to go oh, spoil some parties. Hundred percent. Definitely. Yep. So I think you're going to be in for a tough slog. Yeah. On, yeah. Uh, big on game. Sunday, are they? Yep. Definitely a big game. And look, if you want to follow them along, they do have live stats. I'm not sure if their associations do live streams at all, but. No. Follow yeah, the live stats the li- if, the you live wanna, stats be available. if you want to follow them. So again, that's on the same website, and that's at 12 p.m. on the Sunday. Yep, I'll be coaching that one. Yep. Uh, oh, coaching um, that. Yeah, Mark Mark, Mark, Mark's away this week, um, so uh, I'll be leading the troops there. Yep, awesome. And youth women, they're on the Saturday at 4 p.m. So they're there 4 p.m., so if you want to follow them on that, that game on the live stats as well, that's 4 p.m. on the uh, on the Saturday. Um, let's talk about our players and focus. As we said to you last time, we like to talk about a b- one player from each team. So yep. Matt, Kick us off with the champ men. Yeah, look, I've got uh, I've gone with Brendan Head this week. Uh, played 25 minutes, dropped 18 points, two of three from the three-point line. Was in foul trouble um, late in the game. Um, but look, I love the way he goes physically out yeah. there. He's tough, tough guy. Tough competitor. Pl- I think I'll, I only saw the stat line. I didn't see much of the game yet, but I would, I'd go so far as to say best on for the team. One of, I believe. One of. Calvin, um, Calvin played physically well as well. Yeah. So. Well, Calvin, that's my player in focus. He got 10 points, 15 rebounds, three assists. So he got that double-double, and not a small double-double either with 15 rebounds. He's working hard on the glass. Mm. And we know he's an absolute competitor. So good job, Calvin. Keep up the, the work. What about the uh, the champ women? Who have you gone with? We don't want to let Mitch talk about any of those oh, do we want to let Oh, I mean, like, we were playing at the same. We were playing yeah. at seven o'clock, so yeah, we uh, we missed the end of the women's game and we missed the start of the men's game. So Did you train with the men at all? I know you guys only squeezed in the one training session. Or uh, yeah, yeah, it was the same. So the men, uh, the youth, and the twenty ones were all trained together at Cambria. Oh, big a big mix. Yeah, big definitely mix. a big mix there. Um, but mix. we had to get the session in, obviously. Yeah, yeah, so definitely, definitely. Do what we got to do. Yeah, nice. All right, so let's go through the champ women. I've gone with Sarah Parsons this week. Uh-huh. Rupert game by Sarah. Yeah, fantastic effort, especially with uh, Sharisha Richard in early foul trouble. Uh, played 34 minutes, had 17 points, 10 rebounds, 3 assists. Stepped up as a veteran on the court. Like, yeah, could have asked much more. Led by example there. And I've gone, again, uh, import Rachel Bell. So, again, I think she uh, equal top scored. Or just dropped, yeah, equal top scored yeah, with absolutely. Sarah. So, the 17 points, 5 rebounds, 2 assists. 42% from the field. So we do not know she likes to put up a lot of shots, but 42% from the field, thats you take fair that. Clip, take, that yep. take that every day. Especially a lot of hers aren't going to be under the rim. So nah. taking 42% from does, the field. Does like a jump shot. Every week. So that was it. In a, the, both of those stats are in a, in a tough loss there. Mm. Speaking of uh, shooting percentages, let's move on to the, the youth, league, or youth league men. Um, my man, Jordan Koika. Yep. 80 His man. His man. His man. His man. I said a couple of weeks ago, look, he, <laughs> he, if he starts shooting the ball and he starts in them, he'll knock him down. And it showed this week, I believe it was 81, 82% from the field. Yep. Overall, played 23 minutes, scored 26 points, um, ended the game with 9 of 11 from the field and 4 of 6 from the three-point line. So, I mean, you can't ask much more than to shoot 80, yeah, yeah. 82% from the field, can you, Mitch? Yeah, like I said, he had the 23 at halftime. And then uh, once we got a comfortable, he was put him on ice. He's getting a bit old, uh, old Geordie. <laughs> um, just sitting at the ripe age of 23. Just an so, absolute uh, veteran of the youth league e- team. Exactly right. Um, so, uh, yeah, once uh, once we had the lead, he can just uh, to kind of sat a little bit and just rest it up uh, for the next couple of weeks. Got to ice that shooting arm. Yeah, exactly. I think you're both going to love the player I've picked here. So, in a game where they won by 37, I've gone with Nathan Stewart. How many field goals do you reckon Nathan Stewart put up? Nato. I'm going to, I think he attempted one. Attempted one. Maybe, Absolute maybe zip. Donuts. Didn't put oh, up no, a no, single shot. Dumb. And you know why he's my player? Because he played 20 minutes on the court, didn't put up a single attempt, worked hard, plus 33 plus minus. Now, you know that's my favorite stat. In a game where you win by 37, he had the equal most plus minus, which means when he's on the court, the team is looking good. My boy Nader just doing the Tony Snell out here running with no stats. Just, just running. Just full cardio session for Running, Nader. but obviously running to the <laughs> right spots. Well, obviously not the best spots because he's not getting the ball to shoot it, is he? Yeah, you got to draw that <laughs> defender. You know, you got to draw that defender. I'm just, I think that's unreal to to be plus 33 when you don't do anything. Like yeah. statistically, statistically, like I'm sure he was doing heaps on the court, but statistically not doing much. We'll see. And, getting, and it's not like everyone was plus 33. No. I think either Geordie or Blake 
they were plus 33. Yeah. And Nathan was plus 33. Oh, I'll take it back. No, it was Dylan Buckman that was plus 33. Oh, Dill. Yep. And Nathan Stewart plus 33. And then even Blake Taylor and Georgie, those offensive powerhouses, I think they were only in the, in the, in the mid to high 20s. Yep. So... Plus, I think plus thirty three when you when you're not putting up big numbers is pretty unreal. Look, we'll see if uh, I can get him a few shots this week at Altona. Yeah, well, I'll, uh, I feel I'll drop like a few you, sets for I him. I feel like you owe him a couple yeah, now yeah, like yeah. after that effort, <laughs> right? Like it's just throwing that out there. And then uh, finally, they got the youth women's. They picked up there another thirty seven point win against McKinnon. Big win. I think that's three on the trot for the youth women's. Yeah, They're pushing hard into their good finals. Set for campaign. finals, yeah. Who have you gone, Ash? I've gone Kim Shanklin. So again, we 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 know we love Kim's work. She's yep. a you know tall girl, works hard. She had thirteen points, four rebounds, two assists, and again, you know I love that plus minus, that plus twenty eight. So big positive minus on that one. So yep. she she's working hard at each end. Who have you got? Uh, I've gone with Steph Leclerc this week. Uh, twenty one minutes, fifteen points, four assists, three rebounds, two steals. Shot five of seven from the three point line. So I believe that's well, all. Uh, there's a bit of a running theme there. Steph's been shooting the ball well, and they're winning games. Yes. Yeah. So I think that could be a key going forward. Which is exciting because I've watched Steph play for a number of years as of, I think, all of us here. We've yep. all watched her play for a number of years and she's not overly ever been known for a three-point shooting. Her. We know she's very athletic, she's quick, gets lots of steals, works hard, you know, yeah. like all those Definitely things. Golden Hands Award. Yeah, like, of, yeah, yeah, Golden Hands Award regularly. Not known for a three-point shooting and now she's stepped into that role. She's well, filled that gap in her game and yeah. now they're getting some good wins. She stepped up in the second quarter. She hit three of those um, five three-pointers in that quarter and uh, they went 26 points held yeah. into three points so yeah. that's a big quarter there's the win mm. there's yeah, the win, win. Right there. absolutely nice so and now we're just going to talk about you know we love to talk about the highlight of the week well this comes from the championship man so AJ Williams goes straight past his man splits the gap hits a rocket pass to Brendan Hett on the rim and gets the easy finish uncontested what happened with the defense? The defense? Well, you know, look down in the bottom corner. <laughs> All mates falling asleep. Brent Heads hit the back up there. Easy bucket. He puts his hand up. Oh, my bad. Oh. Just a cheeky wave to go. Hey, coach, sorry. Yeah. Um, my bad. Not doing my job. Don't put me on the bench, please. Coach That's is, one of those ones. Coach is ready to pull the uh, pull the hair out. Yeah. And he's just gone, oh, yep, my bad. My bad. Brent and Heads thinking, thank you, thank you, mother, for the chocolates. Happy days. Yeah, Two points. Coach killer, that one. And then finally, uh, as always, you know, get some winter merchandise. Is anyone wearing the winter? No. <laughs> Track the you got the tracking yeah, pants the on again. On. I don't have yep. I don't have any of the official winter merchandise on, shorts. but you know, as always, you know, we can get the uh, the charcoal, the the grey mile, the yep. navy hoodies. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got navy and the the light grey tracky pants. We've got beanies, got all that stuff. So that's still on sale. You know, you can come in and buy that at the stadium during competitions if you're permitted in. So I know yep. at the moment it's a bit tough because you know you got to be the parent again. But if you come and have a chat to the uh, to the staff there, if you're one of those friends of guardians, they might be able to help you out. Hopefully next week that's a little bit easier to do. But you can always buy it online. Yep. Just go to the Casey Basketball website, have a search in the search bar there for the uh, the winter Which merchandise, merch. and then that'll pop up for you. All right. Well, uh, let's let's thank the sponsors. Um, we love our sponsors. Love thank our sponsors, you absolutely. to Illusion Gas Log Fires. Keep warm this winter. It is very cold at the moment. So it is quite chilly. Know, yep. It's really chilly. Uh, Guzmani Gomez, fast food your mum says yes to. Never say no to a burrito from oh, Guzmani Gomez. Especially a breakfast a burrito. burrito. I had one the other day. Amazing, amazing. I'm not going to lie. I never, like, obviously working stuff. I don't I don't stop at fast food to get breakfast in no. the morning. But on the weekends, I don't think I'm up early enough to get breakfast. <laughs> well, if, if you're ever no. up early enough, get one. Amazing. Uh, Mog, keep smiling. Uh, that's Melbourne Orthodontist Group. Yep, and always, you know, we've got the masks on. We're smiling nonstop, so keep exactly it up. Exactly right. right. Carlisle Holmes, build a better home. And Physio Works Health Group, assisting Casey Basketball with injury prevention and recovery. Perfect. You nailed that. All All friends of the podcast, so make sure if you're looking for any of those things or anything else, you know, head to our website, casebasketball.com.au to see a list of all of our sponsors and uh, and our partners and, you know, support them where you can because obviously during all these lockdowns and things like that, People are getting hit hard, so you They're know, doing it tough. All, all the things, little things you can do. So you know, if you're gonna, if you're looking to go out for for some food, head over to Trios in Cranbourne. If you're going down to the island at all, Phillip Island, head to Cheeky Goose Cafe. There's lots of ways that you can support our partners and get some great Heard benefits. The for best yourself. fried chicken in Victoria, old Cheeky Goose. Well, you know, I've had it a few times now, yeah, and yeah. It, it'd be up there. Yeah. It, it'd be up there. And to be honest, they've actually just won the best bar in regional regional Victoria or all of Victoria. Oh, hey. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's regional Either or way, that's Victoria, a big award. but big yeah, award. Yeah. Yeah, it's the best bar there. So if you're looking for a drink or looking to get a, a good bite, quality food, mm. head down to Phillip Island, Cheeky Goose Cafe there just in Cowes. So, yeah. Amazing. All right. Well, uh, hopefully we get to see some good Olympic action today and tomorrow, and then uh, hopefully we get some more over the weekend because we'll be playing off in some medal games, hopefully. Exactly. And we'll, uh, we'll see you back next week. Thanks, guys.